Polynesia UK, US, from Greek, polis polis, many, and Greek, nesos nesos, island. French, Polynesie, Samoan, Polynesia, Maori, Peronahia or Peronahia is a subregion of Oceania, made up of more than 1,000 islands scattered over the central and southern Pacific Ocean. The indigenous people who inhabit the islands of Polynesia are termed Polynesians, and share many similar traits including language family, culture, and beliefs. Historically, they had a strong tradition of sailing and using stars to navigate at night. The largest country in Polynesia is New Zealand. The term Polynesia was first used in 1756 by a French writer named Charles de Brasses, and originally applied to all the islands of the Pacific. In 1831, Jules Dumont d'Urville proposed a restriction on its use during a lecture to the Geographical Society of Paris. Historically, the islands of the South Seas have been known as South Sea Islands, and their inhabitants as South Sea Islanders, even though the Hawaiian Islands are located in the North Pacific. Another term, the Polynesian Triangle, explicitly includes the Hawaiian Islands, as they form its northern vertex. Geography Geology Polynesia is characterized by a small amount of land spread over a very large portion of the mid and southern Pacific Ocean. Most Polynesian islands and archipelagos, including the Hawaiian Islands and Samoa, are composed of volcanic islands built by hotspots volcanoes. New Zealand, Norfolk Island, and Uvea, the Polynesian outlier near New Caledonia, are the unsubmerged portions of the largely sunken continent of Zealandia. Zealandia is believed to have mostly sunk 23 million years ago and recently resurfaced geologically due to a change in the movements of the Pacific Plate in relation to the Indo Australian Plate, which served to uplift the New Zealand portion. At first, the Pacific Plate was subducted under the Australian Plate. The Alpine Fault that traverses the South Island is currently a transform fault while the convergent plate boundary from the North Island northwards is called the Kermadec Tonga Subduction Zone. The volcanism associated with this subduction zone is the origin of the Kermadec and Tongan Island archipelagos. Out of approximately 300,000 or 310,000 square kilometers, 117,000 or 118,000 square miles of land, over 270,000 square kilometers, 103,000 square miles are within New Zealand. The Hawaiian archipelago comprises about half the remainder. The Zealandia continent has approximately 3,600,000 square kilometers, 1,400,000 square miles of continental shelf. The oldest rocks in the region are found in New Zealand and are believed to be about 510 million years old. The oldest Polynesian rocks outside of Zealandia are to be found in the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain and are 80 million years old. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geographic area. Polynesia is generally defined as the islands within the Polynesian Triangle, although some islands inhabited by Polynesian people are situated outside the Polynesian Triangle. Geographically, the Polynesian Triangle is drawn by connecting the points of Hawaii, New Zealand, and Easter Island. The other main island groups located within the Polynesian Triangle are Samoa, Tonga, the Cook Islands, Tuvalu, Tokelau, Niue, Wallace and Futuna, and French Polynesia. Also, small Polynesian settlements are in Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, the Caroline Islands, and Vanuatu. An island group with strong Polynesian cultural traits outside of this great triangle is Rituma, situated north of Fiji. The people of Rituma have many common Polynesian traits, but speak a non-Polynesian language. Some of the Lao Islands to the southeast of Fiji have strong historic and cultural links with Tonga. However, in essence, Polynesia is a cultural term referring to one of the three parts of Oceania the others being Micronesia and Melanesia. <inaudible> <inaudible> Island groups The following are the islands and island groups, either nations or overseas territories of former colonial powers, that are of native Polynesian culture or where archaeological evidence indicates Polynesian settlement in the past. Some islands of Polynesian origin are outside the general triangle that geographically defines the region. Topic: <inaudible> Core area. Fijian Lao Islands. 
The Phoenix Islands and Line Islands, most of which are part of Kiribati, had no permanent settlements until European colonization, but are sometimes considered to be inside the Polynesian Triangle. In pre-colonial times, Polynesian populations also existed in the Kermadec Islands, the Auckland Islands and Norfolk Island. However, when European explorers arrived, these islands were uninhabited. Topic: Outliers. Topic: Melanesia. Anuda in the Solomon Islands. Bologna Island in the Solomon Islands. EMAE in Vanuatu. Fiji. Mili in Vanuatu. Nuguria in Papua New Guinea. Nukamanu in Papua New Guinea. Antong Java in the Solomon Islands. Pilani in the Solomon Islands. Renal in the Solomon Islands. Sikayana in the Solomon Islands. Takuu in Papua New Guinea. Tikopia in the Solomon Islands. The United States Minor Outlying Islands. Topic. Micronesia Kapingamarangi in the Federated States of Micronesia Nukuoro in the Federated States of Micronesia Topic Subantarctic Islands Auckland Islands the most southerly known evidence of Polynesian settlement Topic History Topic. Origins and expansion The Polynesian people are considered to be by linguistic, archaeological and human genetic ancestry a subset of the sea-migrating Austronesian people. Tracing Polynesian languages places their prehistoric origins in the Malay archipelago, and ultimately, in Taiwan. Between about 3000 and 1000 BCE speakers of Austronesian languages began spreading from Taiwan into island Southeast Asia. There are three theories regarding the spread of humans across the Pacific to Polynesia. These are outlined well by Kaiser et al. 2000 and are as follows. Express train model, a recent c. 3000 1000 BCE expansion out of Taiwan via the Philippines and eastern Indonesia and from the northwest. Bird's head of New Guinea, onto island Melanesia by roughly 1400 BCE, reaching western Polynesian islands around 900 BCE. This theory is supported by the majority of current genetic, linguistic, and archaeological data. Entangled Bank Model, emphasizes the long history of Austronesian speakers' cultural and genetic interactions with indigenous island Southeast Asians and Melanesians along the way to becoming the first Polynesians. Slow boat model, similar to the express train model but with a longer hiatus in Melanesia along with admixture, both genetically, culturally and linguistically with the local population. This is supported by the Y-chromosome data of Kaiser et al., 2000, which shows that all three haplotypes of Polynesian Y-chromosomes can be traced back to Melanesia. In the archaeological record there are well-defined traces of this expansion which allow the path it took to be followed and dated with some certainty. It is thought that by roughly 1400 BCE, Lapita peoples, so named after their pottery tradition, appeared in the Bismarck Archipelago of northwest Melanesia. This culture is seen as having adapted and evolved through time and space since its emergence, out of Taiwan. They had given up rice production, for instance, after encountering and adapting to breadfruit in the Bird's Head area of New Guinea. The results of research at the Tioma Lapita site Ifate Island, Vanuatu, and the Talishu Lapita site near Nukualofa, Tonga published in 2016 supports the express train model, although with the qualification that the migration bypassed New Guinea and island Melanesia. The conclusion from research published in 2016 is that the initial population of those two sites appears to come directly from Taiwan or the northern Philippines and did not mix with the Australopapuans of New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. The preliminary analysis of skulls found at the Tioma and Talishu Lapita sites is that they lack Australian or Papuan affinities and instead have affinities to mainland Asian populations. DNA analysis of modern Polynesians indicates that there has been intermarriage resulting in a mixed Asian-Papuan ancestry of the Polynesians. 
Research at the Tioma and Talishu Lapita sites implies that the migration and intermarriage, which resulted in the mixed Asian Papuan ancestry of the Polynesians, occurred after the first initial migration to Vanuatu and Tonga. The most eastern site for Lapita archaeological remains recovered so far is at Mulafanua on Upolu. The Mulafanua site, where 4,288 pottery shards have been found and studied, has a true age of c. 1000 BCE based on C14 dating. A 2010 study places the beginning of the human archaeological sequences of Polynesia in Tonga at 900 BCE within a mere three or four centuries. Between 1300 and 900 BCE, the Lapita archaeological culture spread 6,000 km further to the east from the Bismarck archipelago, until reaching as far as Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa, which were first populated around 3,000 years ago, as previously mentioned. A cultural divide began to develop between Fiji to the west, and the distinctive Polynesian language and culture emerging on Tonga and Samoa to the east. Where there was once faint evidence of uniquely shared developments in Fijian and Polynesian speech, most of this is now called borrowing, and is thought to have occurred in those and later years more than as a result of continuing unity of their earliest dialects on those far-flung lands. Contacts were mediated especially through the eastern Lao Islands of Fiji. This is where most Fijian-Polynesian linguistic interaction occurred. Tiny populations may have been involved at first, although Professor Matisu Smith of the Otago study said that the founding Maori population of New Zealand must have been in the hundreds, much larger than previously thought. Culture The Polynesians were matrilineal and matrilocal Stone Age societies upon arrival in Fiji, Tonga and Samoa, after having been through at least some time in the Bismarck archipelago. The modern Polynesians still show human genetic results of a Melanesian culture which allowed indigenous men, but not women, to marry in. Useful evidence for matrilocality, Athel Anderson wrote that analysis of mtDNA female and Y chromosome male concluded that the ancestors of Polynesian women came from Taiwan while those of Polynesian men came from New Guinea. Subsequently, it was found that 96% of Polynesian mtDNA has an Asian origin, as does one third of Polynesian Y chromosomes, the remaining two thirds from New Guinea and nearby islands. This is consistent with matrilocal residence patterns. Although matrilocality and matrilineality receded at some early time, Polynesians and most other Austronesian speakers in the Pacific Islands were, are still highly matricentric in their traditional jurisprudence. The Lapita pottery for which the general archaeological complex of the earliest Oceanic Austronesian speakers in the Pacific Islands are named also went away in Western Polynesia. Language, social life and material culture were very distinctly Polynesian by the time Eastern Polynesia was being settled after a pause of 1,000 years or more in Western Polynesia. The dating of the settlement of eastern Polynesia, including Hawaii, Easter Island, and New Zealand, is not agreed upon in every instance. Most recently, a 2010 study using meta-analysis of the most reliable radiocarbon dates available suggested that the colonization of eastern Polynesia including Hawaii and New Zealand proceeded in two short episodes, in the Society Islands from 1025 to 1120 AD and further afield from 1190 to 1290 AD, with Easter Island being settled around 1200. Other archaeological models developed in recent decades, which are challenged by that recent set of radiocarbon dating interpretations, have pointed to dates of between 300 and 500 AD, or alternatively 800 AD as supported by Jared Diamond for the settlement of Easter Island, and similarly, a date of 500 AD has been suggested for Hawaii. Linguistically, there is a very distinct East Polynesian subgroup with many shared innovations not seen in other Polynesian languages. The Marquesas dialects are perhaps the source of the oldest Hawaiian speech which is overlaid by Tahitian variety speech, as Hawaiian oral histories would suggest. The earliest varieties of New Zealand Maori speech may have had multiple sources from around central eastern Polynesia as Maori oral histories would suggest. Topic. Political history Topic. Tonga 16th century present After a bloody civil war, political power in Tonga eventually fell under the Tui Kanokupolu dynasty in the 16th century. 
In 1845 the ambitious young warrior, strategist, and orator Taufa Ahau united Tonga into a more western-style kingdom. He held the chiefly title of Tu'ai Kanokupolu, but had been baptized with the name Zhao Ji in 1831. In 1875, with the help of the missionary Shirley Waldemar Baker, he declared Tonga a constitutional monarchy, formally adopted the western royal style, emancipated the serfs, enshrined a code of law, land tenure, and freedom of the press, and limited the power of the chiefs. Tonga became a British protected state under a Treaty of Friendship on 18 May 1900, when European settlers and rival Tongan chiefs tried to oust the second king. Within the British Empire, which posted no higher permanent representative on Tonga than a British consul 1901-1970, Tonga formed part of the British Western Pacific Territories under a colonial high commissioner, residing in Fiji, from 1901 until 1952. Despite being under the protectorate, Tonga retained its monarchy without interruption. On June 4, 1970 the Kingdom of Tonga received independence from the British protectorate. <laughs> Samoa Tui Manwa and Malietoa present Samoa has a long history of various ruling families, the oldest of which is the Tui Manwa, and the most recent of which is the Malietoa, until its east-west division by Tripartite Convention 1899, subsequent annexation by the German Empire and the United States. The German-controlled western portion of Samoa consisting of the bulk of Samoan territory was occupied by New Zealand in World War I, and administered by it under a Class C League of Nations mandate until receiving independence on January 1, 1962. The new independent state of Samoa was not a monarchy, though the Malietoa title holder remained very influential. It officially ended, however with the death of Malietoa Tanamafili II on May 11, 2007. Topic. Tahiti Topic. Hawaii Topic. New Zealand Maori On October 28, 1835 members of the Napuhi and surrounding Maori tribes IWI issued a «Declaration of Independence» as a «Confederation of Tribes» to resist potential French colonization efforts and to prevent the ships and cargo of Maori merchants from being seized at foreign ports. They received recognition from the British monarch in 1836. See United Tribes of New Zealand, New Zealand Declaration of Independence, James Busby. Using the Treaty of Waitangi and Right of Discovery as a basis, the United Kingdom annexed New Zealand as a part of New South Wales in 1840. In response to the actions of the colonial government, Maori looked to form a monarchy inclusive of all Maori tribes in order to reduce vulnerability to the British divide and conquer strategy. Potatau Te Werofero, high priest and chief of the Ngati Mahuta tribe of the Waikato IWI, was crowned as the Maori king in 1858. The king's territory consisted primarily of the lands in the centre of the North Island, and the IWI constituted the most powerful non-signatories of the Treaty of Waitangi, with Te Werofero also never having signed it. See Kingitonga All tribes were incorporated into rule under the colonial government by the late 19th century. Although Maori were given the privilege of being legally enfranchised subjects of the British Empire under the treaty, Maori culture and language te reo Maori were actively suppressed by the colonial government and by economic and social pressures from the Pakeha society. Efforts were made to preserve indigenous culture starting in the late 1950s and culminating in the Waitangi Tribunal's interpretation of language and culture being included in the treasures set to be preserved under the Treaty of Waitangi. Moving from a low point of 15,000 speakers in the 1970s, there are now over 157,000 people who have some proficiency in the standard Maori language according to the 2006 census in New Zealand, due in large part to government recognition and promotion of the language. Topic. Fiji The Lao Islands were subject to periods of Tongan rulership and then Fijian control until their eventual conquest by Seru Epanisa Keikabao of the Kingdom of Fiji by 1871. In around 1855 a Tongan prince, Enali Mafu, proclaimed the Lao Islands as his kingdom, and took the title Tui Lao. Fiji had been ruled by numerous divided chieftains until Keikabao unified the landmass. 
The Lapita culture, the ancestors of the Polynesians, existed in Fiji from about 3500 BCE until they were displaced by the Melanesians about a thousand years later. Both Samoans and subsequent Polynesian cultures adopted Melanesian painting and tattoo methods. In 1873, Keikabau ceded a Fiji heavily indebted to foreign creditors to the United Kingdom. It became independent on 10 October 1970 and a republic on 28 September 1987. Topic. Cook Islands The Cook Islands is made up of 15 islands comprising the northern and southern groups. The islands are spread out across many kilometers of a vast ocean. The largest of these islands is called Rarotonga, which is also the political and economic capital of the nation. The Cook Islands were formerly known as the Hervé Islands, but this name refers only to the northern groups. It is unknown when this name was changed to reflect the current name. It is thought that the Cook Islands were settled in two periods, the Tahitian period, when the country was settled between 900–1300 AD. The second settlement, the Maui Settlement, occurred in 1600 AD, when a large contingent from Tahiti settled in Rarotonga, in the Takatumu district. Cook Islanders are ethnically Polynesians or Eastern Polynesia. They are culturally associated with Tahiti, Eastern Islands, NZ Maori and Hawaii. Early in the 17th century, became the first race to settle in New Zealand. Tuvalu The reef islands and atolls of Tuvalu are identified as being part of West Polynesia. During pre-European contact times there was frequent canoe voyaging between the islands as Polynesian navigation skills are recognized to have allowed deliberate journeys on double-hull sailing canoes or outrigger canoes. Eight of the nine islands of Tuvalu were inhabited, thus the name, Tuvalu, means, eight standing together, in Tuvaluan. The pattern of settlement that is believed to have occurred is that the Polynesians spread out from Samoa and Tonga into the Tuvaluan atolls, with Tuvalu providing a stepping stone for migration into the Polynesian outlier communities in Melanesia and Micronesia. Stories as to the ancestors of the Tuvaluans vary from island to island. On Niutau, Funafuti, and Vaitupu, the founding ancestor is described as being from Samoa, whereas on Nanamea, the founding ancestor is described as being from Tonga. The extent of influence of the Tuai Tonga line of Tongan kings, which originated in the 10th century, is understood to have extended to some of the islands of Tuvalu in the 11th to mid 13th century. The oral history of Niutau recalls that in the 15th century, Tongan warriors were defeated in a battle on the reef of Niutau. Tongan warriors also invaded Niutau later in the 15th century and again were repelled. A third and fourth Tongan invasion of Niutau occurred in the late 16th century, again with the Tongans being defeated. Fishing was the primary source of protein, with the cuisine of Tuvalu reflecting food that could be grown on low lying atolls. Navigation between the islands of Tuvalu was carried out using outrigger canoes. The population levels of the low-lying islands of Tuvalu had to be managed because of the effects of periodic droughts and the risk of severe famine if the gardens were poisoned by salt from the storm surge of a tropical cyclone. <laughs> <laughs> Links to the Americas The sweet potato, called kumara in Maori and kumar in Quechua, is native to the Americas and was widespread in Polynesia when Europeans first reached the Pacific. Remains of the plant in the Cook Islands have been radiocarbon dated to 1000, and current thinking is that it was brought to central Polynesia c. 700 and spread across Polynesia from there, possibly by Polynesians who had traveled to South America and back. Thor Heyerdahl proposed in the mid 20th century that the Polynesians had migrated from the northwest coast of Canada by large whale hunting dugouts, and from South America on balsa log boats. Many anthropologists have criticized Heyerdahl's theory, including Wade Davis in his book The Wayfinders. Davis says that Heyerdahl "...ignored the overwhelming body of linguistic, ethnographic, and ethnobotanical evidence, augmented today by genetic and archaeological data, indicating that he was patently wrong." <laughs> Cultures Polynesia divides into two distinct cultural groups, East Polynesia and West Polynesia. The culture of West Polynesia is conditioned to high populations. It has strong institutions of marriage and well-developed judicial, monetary and trading traditions. 
It comprises the groups of Tonga, Niue, Samoa and extends to the atolls of Tuvalu to the north. The pattern of settlement that is believed to have occurred is that the Polynesians spread out from the Samoan Islands into the Tuvaluan atolls, with Tuvalu providing a stepping stone to migration into the Polynesian outlier communities in Melanesia and Micronesia. Eastern Polynesian cultures are highly adapted to smaller islands and atolls, principally the Cook Islands, Tahiti, the Tuamotus, the Marquesas, Hawaii, Rapa Nui, and smaller Central Pacific groups. The large islands of New Zealand were first settled by eastern Polynesians who adapted their culture to a non-tropical environment. Unlike Melanesia, leaders were chosen in Polynesia based on their hereditary bloodline. Samoa, however, had another system of government that combines elements of heredity and real-world skills to choose leaders. This system is called Famatai. According to Ben R. Finney and Eric M. Jones, on Tahiti, for example, the 35,000 Polynesians living there at the time of European discovery were divided between high-status persons with full access to food and other resources, and low-status persons with limited access. Religion, farming, fishing, weather prediction, outrigger canoe similar to modern catamarans construction and navigation were highly developed skills because the population of an entire island depended on them. Trading of both luxuries and mundane items was important to all groups. Periodic droughts and subsequent famines often led to war. Many low-lying islands could suffer severe famine if their gardens were poisoned by the salt from the storm surge of a tropical cyclone. In these cases fishing, the primary source of protein, would not ease loss of food energy. Navigators, in particular, were highly respected and each island maintained a house of navigation with a canoe building area. Settlements by the Polynesians were of two categories, the hamlet and the village. The size of the island inhabited determined whether or not a hamlet would be built. The larger volcanic islands usually had hamlets because of the many zones that could be divided across the island. Food and resources were more plentiful. These settlements of four to five houses usually with gardens were established so that there would be no overlap between the zones. Villages, on the other hand, were built on the coasts of smaller islands and consisted of 30 or more houses—in the case of atolls, on only one of the groups so that food cultivation was on the others. Usually these villages were fortified with walls and palisades made of stone and wood, however, New Zealand demonstrates the opposite, large volcanic islands with fortified villages. As well as being great navigators, these people were artists and artisans of great skill. Simple objects, such as fish hooks would be manufactured to exacting standards for different catches and decorated even when the decoration was not part of the function. Stone and wooden weapons were considered to be more powerful the better they were made and decorated. In some island groups weaving was a strong part of the culture and gifting woven articles was an ingrained practice. Dwellings were imbued with character by the skill of their building. Body decoration and jewelry is of an international standard to this day. The religious attributes of Polynesians were common over the whole Pacific region. While there are some differences in their spoken languages they largely have the same explanation for the creation of the earth and sky, for the gods that rule aspects of life and for the religious practices of everyday life. People traveled thousands of miles to celebrations that they all owned communally. Beginning in the 1820s large numbers of missionaries worked in the islands, converting many groups to Christianity. Polynesia, argues Ian Breward, is now one of the most strongly Christian regions in the world. Christianity was rapidly and successfully incorporated into Polynesian culture. War and slavery disappeared. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Languages. Polynesian languages are all members of the family of Oceanic languages, a sub-branch of the Austronesian language family. Polynesian languages show a considerable degree of similarity. The vowels are generally the same a, e, i, o, and u, pronounced as in Italian, Spanish, and German and the consonants are always followed by a vowel. The languages of various island groups show changes in consonants. R and V are used in Central and Eastern Polynesia whereas L and V are used in Western Polynesia. The glottal stop is increasingly represented by an inverted comma or okina. In the Society Islands, the original Proto-Polynesian asterisk K and asterisk ing have merged as glottal stop, so the name for the ancestral homeland, deriving from Proto-Nuclear Polynesian asterisk Sawaiki, becomes Havai'i. 
In New Zealand, where the original asterisk W is used instead of V, the ancient home is Hawaii. In the Cook Islands, where the glottal stop replaces the original asterisk S with a likely intermediate stage of asterisk H, it is Aveiki". In the Hawaiian Islands, where the glottal stop replaces the original K, the largest island of the group is named Hawaii. In Samoa, where the original S is used instead of H, V replaces W, and the glottal stop replaces the original K, the largest island is called Savai'i. Economy With the exception of New Zealand, the majority of independent Polynesian islands derive much of their income from foreign aid and remittances from those who live in other countries. Some encourage their young people to go where they can earn good money to remit to their stay-at-home relatives. Many Polynesian locations, such as Easter Island, supplement this with tourism income. Some have more unusual sources of income, such as Tuvalu which marketed its, TV, internet top-level domain name or the cooks that relied on postage stamp sales. Inter-Polynesian cooperation The first major attempt at uniting the Polynesian islands was by Imperial Japan in the 1930s, when various theorists chiefly Hachiro Arita began promulgating the idea of what would soon become known as the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Under the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, all nations stretching from Southeast and Northeast Asia to Oceania would be united under one, large, cultural and economic bloc which would be free from Western imperialism. The policy theorists who conceived it, along with the Japanese public, largely saw it as a pan-Asian movement driven by ideals of freedom and independence from Western colonial oppression. In practice, however, it was frequently corrupted by militarists who saw it as an effective policy vehicle through which to strengthen Japan's position and advance its dominance within Asia. At its greatest extent, it stretched from Japanese-occupied Indochina in the west to the Gilbert Islands in the east, although it was originally planned to stretch as far east as Hawaii and Easter Island and as far west as India. This never came to fruition, however, as Japan was defeated during World War II and subsequently lost all power and influence it had. After several years of discussing a potential regional grouping, three sovereign states Samoa, Tonga and Tuvalu and five self-governing but non-sovereign territories formally launched, in November 2011, the Polynesian Leaders Group, intended to cooperate on a variety of issues including culture and language, education, responses to climate change, and trade and investment. It does not, however, constitute a political or monetary union. Navigation Polynesia comprised islands diffused throughout a triangular area with sides of 4,000 miles. The area from the Hawaiian Islands in the north, to Easter Island in the east and to New Zealand in the south were all settled by Polynesians. Navigators traveled to small inhabited islands using only their own senses and knowledge passed by oral tradition from navigator to apprentice. In order to locate directions at various times of day and year, navigators in eastern Polynesia memorized important facts, the motion of specific stars, and where they would rise on the horizon of the ocean, weather, times of travel, wildlife species which congregate at particular positions, directions of swells on the ocean, and how the crew would feel their motion, colors of the sea and sky, especially how clouds would cluster at the locations of some islands, and angles for approaching harbors. These wayfinding techniques, along with outrigger canoe construction methods, were kept as guild secrets. Generally each island maintained a guild of navigators who had very high status, in times of famine or difficulty these navigators could trade for aid or evacuate people to neighboring islands. On his first voyage of Pacific exploration Cook had the services of a Polynesian navigator, Tupaya, who drew a hand-drawn chart of the islands within 3,200 kilometers 2,000 miles radius to the north and west of his home island of Raati. Tupaya had knowledge of 130 islands and named 74 on his chart. Tupaya had navigated from Raati in short voyages to 13 islands. He had not visited western Polynesia, as since his grandfather's time the extent of voyaging by Raetines has diminished to the islands of eastern Polynesia. His grandfather and father had passed to Tupaya the knowledge as to the location of the major islands of western Polynesia and the navigation information necessary to voyage to Fiji, Samoa and Tonga. As the Admiralty orders directed Cook to search for the Great Southern Continent, Cook ignored Tupaya's chart and his skills as a navigator. 
To this day, original traditional methods of Polynesian navigation are still taught in the Polynesian outlier of Taumako Island in the Solomon Islands. From a single chicken bone recovered from the archaeological site of El Arenal 1, on the Arauco Peninsula, Chile, a 2007 research report looking at radiocarbon dating and an ancient DNA sequence indicate that Polynesian navigators may have reached the Americas at least 100 years before Columbus who arrived 1492 AD, introducing chickens to South America. A later report looking at the same specimens concluded, a published, apparently pre-Columbian, Chilean specimen and six pre-European Polynesian specimens also cluster with the same European, Indian subcontinental, Southeast Asian sequences, providing no support for a Polynesian introduction of chickens to South America. In contrast, sequences from two archaeological sites on Easter Island group with an uncommon haplogroup from Indonesia, Japan, and China and may represent a genetic signature of an early Polynesian dispersal. Modeling of the potential marine carbon contribution to the Chilean archaeological specimen casts further doubt on claims for pre-Columbian chickens, and definitive proof will require further analyses of ancient DNA sequences and radiocarbon and stable isotope data from archaeological excavations within both Chile and Polynesia. Knowledge of the traditional Polynesian methods of navigation were largely lost after contact with and colonization by Europeans. This left the problem of accounting for the presence of the Polynesians in such isolated and scattered parts of the Pacific. By the late 19th century to the early 20th century a more generous view of Polynesian navigation had come into favor, perhaps creating a romantic picture of their canoes, seamanship and navigational expertise. In the mid to late 1960s, scholars began testing sailing and paddling experiments related to Polynesian navigation. David Lewis sailed his catamaran from Tahiti to New Zealand using stellar navigation without instruments, and Ben Finney built a 40 foot replica of a Hawaiian double canoe, Nalahia, and tested it in Hawaii. Meanwhile, Micronesian ethnographic research in the Caroline Islands revealed that traditional stellar navigational methods were still in everyday use. Recent recreations of Polynesian voyaging have used methods based largely on Micronesian methods and the teachings of a Micronesian navigator, Mao Pielug. It is probable that the Polynesian navigators employed a whole range of techniques including use of the stars, the movement of ocean currents and wave patterns, the air and sea interference patterns caused by islands and atolls, the flight of birds, the winds and the weather. Scientists think that long-distance Polynesian voyaging followed the seasonal paths of birds. There are some references in their oral traditions to the flight of birds and some say that there were range marks on shore pointing to distant islands in line with these flyways. One theory is that they would have taken a frigatebird with them. These birds refuse to land on the water as their feathers will become waterlogged making it impossible to fly. When the voyagers thought they were close to land they may have released the bird, which would either fly towards land or else return to the canoe. It is likely that the Polynesians also used wave and swell formations to navigate. It is thought that the Polynesian navigators may have measured the time it took to sail between islands in canoe days or a similar type of expression. Also, people of the Marshall Islands used special devices called stick charts, showing the places and directions of swells and wave breaks, with tiny seashells affixed to them to mark the positions of islands along the way. Materials for these maps were readily available on beaches, and their making was simple, however, their effective use needed years and years of study. See also Polynesia portal List of Polynesians Polynesian mythology Polynesian society Polynesian voyaging society Films set in Polynesia Topic. References Topic. Further reading Gaddy, Harold Finding Your Ways Without Map or Compass. Dover Publications, Inc. ISBN 0-486-40613-X External links History of Easter Island illustrated by stamps Interview with David Lewis Lewis commenting on spirits of the voyage Useful introduction to Maori society, including canoe voyages 
Obituary, David Henry Lewis, including how he came to rediscover Pacific Ocean navigation methods. <laughs>